Many people think of oxytocin as the love hormone. It's responsible for the natural high a mother gets from breastfeeding. It's also the feeling of connection with a loved one. And now scientists are discovering the potential of oxytocin to treat addiction and social disorders. Oxytocin is uh, what's called a, a neuropeptide, and it's a type of chemical that's produced naturally in the brains of all mammals, including humans. And we know that oxytocin dampens down stress and anxiety, and it also enhances people's motivation to engage in social behavior. Oxytocin is a hormone produced in the part of the brain called the hypothalamus. It's then released throughout the brain and into the bloodstream. It links social interactions to the brain's reward system, promoting bonding and affecting our mood. Oxytocin that's released into the bloodstream plays a role in functions such as stimulating uterine contractions during childbirth. It controls the milk letdown reflex during breastfeeding. But what we're really interested in is the oxytocin that's released in a number of brain regions that play a critical role in motivational behavior, in social behavior, and in stress and anxiety responses. Worldwide, around 35 million people suffer from opioid, cocaine, cannabis, and amphetamine type drug use disorder disorders, but only one in seven receives treatment. These addictions can cause death, chronic medical conditions, and cost society billions of dollars in healthcare. But neuroscientist and psychopharmacologist Associate Professor Michael Bowen's research shows that oxytocin may be able to help moderate addictive behaviours. We know that some people can have differences in their brain oxytocin systems, and these differences can make people more prone to certain types of disorders. Uh, for instance, it can make them more susceptible to developing uh, addictions in their adulthood. Over the past decade, Associate Professor Bowen and his colleagues have developed a compound with similar effects to oxytocin and have conducted numerous preclinical trials on rodents. The team's results show that the compound has had anti-addictive effects in animal models of alcohol and methamphetamine use. And early evidence suggests it may be effective for other substances, such as opioids. We've also had our results independently replicated across multiple different labs, and all the signs point to this having great potential. Addiction has a powerful influence over the brain and the way it registers pleasure. Alcohol is one of the most harmful drugs worldwide, with more than 100 million people suffering from alcoholism. It's also responsible for around 3 million deaths a year. We know that drugs and alcohol produce euphoria and trigger surges of dopamine in the brain. So these surges of dopamine can then lead to cravings um, and teach the brain to want more or seek out more of the substance. And this can then lead to addiction for some people. Professor Adam Guastella and Dr. Kelsey Bolton are also involved in oxytocin research. They're currently treating more than 100 people with alcohol addiction with an oxytocin nasal spray for eight weeks to see if it reduces cravings. Now oxytocin provides a great target because it can potentially reduce the cravings and anxiety and it can do it in a way which doesn't require people to stop taking alcohol. They can take the oxytocin with the alcohol and uh, gradually reduce their addiction to the alcohol over time. It sounds like a magic cure, but Associate Professor Bowen warns there are still some issues that need to be overcome to unlock the potential of oxytocin. It can't be taken orally because it just gets broken down in the gut. And even when it's administered through other means, it has a very short half-life, which means it can't act for very long. Associate Professor Bowen and his colleagues have been working over the past decade to overcome these hurdles. Together with the company he co-founded, Canoxus Therapeutics, they're now seeking approval from the US Food and Drug Administration to go into human trials in 2021. When you look across the spectrum of disorders of the brain and mind, we see this profound dysregulation of social behaviour, from addiction to autism, to dementia, to depression. We're hopeful that this new drug that we're developing will provide a desperately needed major breakthrough in the way that we treat these disorders.